So the first thing we need is to create a trail behind these RBD objects. So let me delete this. And this is how the geometry will come out of the uh, the RBD system. It's going to come in as a pack primitive. And this display is only uh, a viewport display. The actual data is just points that we can use. And to properly dis to display these objects as a centroid, I'm going to use a pack and edit node, pack edit node. And then this guy I can change, say I want to display these guys as centroids. Okay. Now we have uh, one point for each uh, for each object that travels along its path, but this is not enough. We don't want just one point. We want to be able to uh, uh, cover the entire silhouette with proper smoke. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scatter points on the original mesh, on the original uh, Voronoid mesh. And if you guys um, are not familiar with with the pack primitive and RBD, what you import from DOPS is just these points, which represents the centroid for all the pieces. And then you would use this with a transform geo. Transform geo. Transform pieces. I'm going to connect the geometry, which is this guy. Connect this. And then you connect the points. And now it's going to be able to transform the original mesh using those points, like that. So now I have a polygon geometry deforming. And the way it does that is using by using a name attribute, which is initialized here and it knows which point belongs to which piece and then it uses that information to deform it. But we don't want to deform these guys. We want to scatter points on the original mesh and then deform these points. So let me scatter them and then we're going to use the uh, these points with the transform pieces. But if you look, it's not working as expected. And the reason for that is because we don't have the name attribute, which is here. And the reason it didn't pass is because it's a primitive attribute, so we need to promote that. Okay, we promoted that. We have the name attribute. Now this guy will work. And now we have uh, points copied into the pieces that we can use. Now what I'm going to do is I don't want to emit. I don't want to emit from all these guys. Okay. I only want to emit from the fast moving objects only. So I'm going to create a point bob. I'm going to take the compute the length of the velocity and use that as a mask. So I'm going to create a fit range. Let's connect that to color. Let's say between 0 and 10. Let's view this. So now based on the velocity of the first frame, they're black. And as soon as they start moving, we get white color. Let me uh, tweak this. I want it to be sharper. Okay, something like that. Cool. So we can then delete everything except the white points. Let's say if the point is less than 0 0.2, we delete that. Yep. So we removed everything. And now if we hit play, once it starts moving, it's in. And then it will uh, disappear as it stops. Cool. The other thing is if we start emitting from all of this, let's say this piece here. Let's say this piece, for example. this guy it's coming this way okay if we look at the oh, we can't see the velocity vector it's fine let me unpack it so we can see the velocity vector so if we look at the motion it's a minute it's going this way and rotating and 
uh, when an object does this, it's not going to emit from any of these surfaces. Anything that is facing forward, it's not going to be emitting from. It's only going to emit from what's behind it. And the way we're going to compute the correct area, the correct orientation where this data is coming from is by using the normals of the mesh. Let me create a normal. We're going to use the normal of the mesh, the velocity vector, and compute the dot product. And where the velocity is aligning with the normals, we're going to use that. So in this case, uh, the velocity is moving this way and the normal is this way, we're going to be able to isolate what's facing the velocity versus what's not. And so here I'm going to go back, I'm going to dive in, I'm going to compute the dot product between n and v. I'm going to normalize both of them. And let's take a look at the result. I assume the velocity is not being passed. Yeah, we don't have a normal on the mesh, so I'm going to put down a facet node here and post compute. Cool. So see how we're, uh, uh, the front face is now being selected, and we want the inverse of that, so I'm going to flip the normal. Let's do, uh, it's not inverting the results, so I'm going to put down a fit range, and I'm going to change this, and now it's selecting the correct area. It's still too bright, so I'm going to put down a ramp, and I want it to be more precise. Cool. So if we look at that, we're only emitting from the correct area. Look at this object. It's falling down without any rotation, and we're uh, isolating the correct area, and that's where we want to be emitting from. We don't want to emit from the front of the object. Look at this guy, for example. Okay, so if we delete, uh, if we multiply both of them, the velocity and this result, we should be able to get the mask that we need. Cool. Okay, now the next thing is I want, I don't, uh, we cannot use this straight away, so I'm going to copy these points using a train node. Okay, let's add, let's say 10. Cool. And then uh, with this, it's going to create a lot of gaps. So if I put down a VDB from particles and convert these guys into a uh, volume. It's going to create gaps. Even if I increase this, it's going to create a lot of gaps. And the reason for that is because we don't have anything in between. And what uh, we need to do is we need to fill in the gaps. We need to fill all this space between the, the various copies. So first of all, I'm going to lower this to 5 and increase this to 10. So I only have uh, 5 copies, which will create even bigger steps. but our solution will fix that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I'm going to create a primitive that connects all the points that have the same, uh, sorry, I'm going to create an attribute that I can use to connect all the points that have the same attribute. And the attribute is going to come from the surface. So if we go back to the original surface here, uh, sorry, the original points, and we create I let's say temp ID and it's equal to the point number that will be consistent throughout all the copies cool so now if we middle click we should have that temp ID we gonna put down an add node and by group by attribute and then the temp ID and there we go we have a straight line connecting all the points. Cool. So we can use this with VDB from uh, from particles. And we can change this to density, lower this to 0, 04, and this to 0, 0.2. Okay. 
maybe 0.4. Cool. Now we have uh, some geometry to work with. Now, with this uh, ID, with this primitive, actually, we didn't add any points, so the result is still with gaps. And what we need to do is we need to resample that. So by resampling it, we're filling the entire space with points. Now, if we convert that into a volume, it's going to create the proper uh, the proper volume for it. Cool. Now, if we uh, look at this, we can see that it's a straight volume. It's a it, there is no dissipation or anything, and this is going to be uh, very uniform when we use it in the emission. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to create a soft ramp that starts white here and ends black along the length of each of these curves. And this is very easy to compute. So I'm going to create a texture node. I'm going to use the UV coordinate of the of the points. And this, uh, this information is going to create a value that starts zero at the point number zero and ends one at the point number at the tip of the curves. So I'm going to change this to rows and columns and it's going to create a uh, vertex attribute. We want it to be a point attribute. And let me, uh, it's creating a vector right now. It's a three float. I'm going to create a, I'm going to create a float using the U coordinate only. So I'm going to call this, let's say, length is equal v dot q dot x. Cool. So let's use a color. ramp call this length there we go let's flip this and now we have a mask we have a uh, a linear mask a linear uh, value that we can use as a multiplier for the curve now let's connect this here and we want to sample that new attribute as well so i'm going to create a new field let me lower the polygon a tiny bit. And I'm going to create that length into a new channel. Cool. So now we have two fields. Let's create a volume vop. And by default, this will always uh, will display the two fields created. So I'm going to use a visibility node and hide everything but the density. I think it was displaying just that, but in case. Cool. So let's import that field, which is called length. And I'm going to multiply the two together. And it's not giving me anything. Let's see why is that. Uh, sorry, it's a it's a vector. It needs to be a float. Cool. So uh, it's working. You can see the result here. I'm gonna add a ramp so we can control it like we did with the color. And let's inverse the this guy. Cool. So it's it's changing the result. But it's not working as expected because if we look at the actual uh, length information, you see it has an empty hole. It has an empty space inside. And this is a limitation from the VDB from particle um, node. Um, unfortunately, I, it's creating empty, it's creating empty interior for anything that is not the main channel, which was confusing to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a polywire node on these guys, I'm going to convert all the curves into actual geometry. Uh, this is going to be a little, a little bit slow to process, but uh, it's going to work. So you can see all the polygons on top of each other. And if we connect it to the color one, it's going to inherit all the attributes and that's what we need. So by default, this will inherit everything. And if we do this, actually, I'm going to go back and reduce the number of points because we don't need a lot of them. So here, I'm going to reduce this 10 times. 
going to have less wires, which we can increase later, so it's faster for us to work with. And now we don't need VDB from particles. We have a geometry to work with, so I'm going to use a VDB from polygon. Cool. Let's uh, convert this. Let's increase the resolution. Let's tick on fill interior, and let's add the the other field. Cool. You can see it here. It's visible now. So let's copy that node. It's hidden. Let's go back. And I'm going to multiply everything because the density is very low in this case. So I'm going to multiply it by 10. And there we go. We have our mask fading off the emission, which is very cool. Now, the last thing that we need to do, which is kind of tricky, is we don't want we don't want these pieces to continuously emit even if they are still moving we want them to emit for a certain period of time and then stop and for that we need to generate the normalized age for these guys and we're going to do that in the next video thank you guys for watching and see you in a bit